Today, our movie recap is Flatliners, a 2017 sci-fi thriller about medical students who experiment with near-death experiences, unlocking dark consequences. The movie starts with Courtney Holmes driving with her sister Tessa. The girls are having a nice time, but tragedy happens when Courtney looks at her phone and crashes the car against the road rail. The car falls into the river. Nine years later, Courtney is a medical student working at the hospital. When checking a patient who almost died earlier that day, Courtney asks if she remembered anything from when her heart stopped. The patient asks if Courtney has lost someone. Ray and Marlo, also medical students, work at the hospital too and compete while caring for a patient. Later, Courtney goes to the library to research the afterlife. Her reading stops when she hears her classmate Sophia Manning crying nearby. Courtney checks on her and learns Sophia is stressed due to her mom's pressure and how hard medical school is. They leave together and Courtney invites her to join a small side project she's working on. Sophia says maybe. The next day, Courtney, Sophia, Marlo, Ray, and their friend Jamie are in class getting scolded by their teacher for not answering well enough. After, Sophia works at a doctor's event with Jamie, who doesn't need the money, but goes to chase a food server. Sophia tells her mom where she is and admits her mother moved in with her to watch over her. After more work at the hospital, Courtney invites Jamie to have fun with her later in the hospital's basement. Jamie thinks she means something else. When he agrees, she asks him to take the service elevator because there are no cameras there. Later that night, both Sophia and Jamie join Courtney at the hospital's basement as she asked. There's a working clinic there for emergencies. Courtney explains her project. She's been looking for the part of the brain responsible for near-death experiences. She wants to map the process the same way they map a seizure. To do that, she wants her friends to stop her heart while she's in a brain scanner then bring her back after one minute. Sophia doesn't want to do it, but Jamie agrees. He stops Courtney's heart with drugs and a heart machine, killing her. While Sophia and Jamie watch the scanner and make sure it's recording, Courtney has an out-of-body experience. She sees everyone in the hospital, then the roof, before going around the city. When the minute passes, Sophia and Jamie try to bring her back, but they can't. Sophia calls Ray for help, and he rushes out of his office when he sees the message. Marlo sees him leave. Courtney continues her journey, now seeing the room she's in, explode, before appearing at a bridge, filled with glowing lights. This vision ends when her friends finally bring her back with Ray's smart help. As Sophia calls Courtney crazy, Marlo arrives and wants to know what's happening. Later, the five go to Courtney's place, where she tells them what the experience was like, calling it pure energy. Together, they watch the scanner recordings and see lightning appearing in different areas of the brain. Ray leaves because he thinks this idea was crazy. Courtney spends 10 minutes on the balcony, just watching the city. When Marlo checks on her, Courtney says she wants to bake. The next morning, Courtney brings all her baked bread to class. Marlo says she made six loaves using her grandmother's recipe. She also says Courtney ran 12 miles. When their teacher starts going through the cases, Courtney has the right answers as soon as Sophia describes them. She even uses rare knowledge she read in a book years ago. That evening when the five go to a bar, Courtney plays the piano after 12 years of not touching one. Her friends are impressed by how she can access everything she's ever learned, calling it rewiring of the brain. Ray still thinks these experiments are a bad idea, but Jamie is excited and decides to go next. Later at her apartment, Courtney thinks she hears a noise in the shower, so she checks. Finding nothing, she leaves but returns when she hears the noise again. She finds one curtain has fallen in the tub, which is now full of water, and she's startled by a face suddenly appearing in it. Screaming, she falls to the floor, only to discover she imagined the whole thing when she gets up again. The group helps Jamie flatline next. His vision puts him on a bike on the highway. The ride is fun, especially when a blonde woman named Alicia appears behind him on the bike. But they end up in a dark neighborhood where Alicia disappears as she whispers his name. And Jamie is brought back to life by his friends. After making sure he's okay, the group goes to Courtney's place to drink and party. She and Jamie kiss and have a snow fight in their underwear when it starts to hail. Ray still isn't interested in flatlining, but Marlo decides she'll go next. Courtney asks Jamie if he saw anything scary, to which he says no. The next day at the hospital, Jamie makes decisions that save patients' lives. Marlo points out the differences between him and Courtney. While she's focused on the past, bringing back old information, Jamie is focused on the present, using his gut feeling. After everyone goes back to work, Jamie sees Alicia standing in the street, but she's gone after he's distracted by a nurse. 
Later that night, Sophia tries to leave her apartment, but her mother doesn't let her, making her stay and study. The group goes on without her, and this time it's Marlo who flatlines. She asks to stay dead for three minutes instead of one like the others. Her visions take her through all her life achievements before showing her the word murderer and revisiting the memory of a patient called Cyrus, whom she couldn't save. His body appears in front of her at the bottom of a scary pool, but before she can come any closer to it, she's brought back to life. The group takes Marlo to the roof so she can get some air, and they're surprised to see Sophia suddenly showing up, demanding to go next. Ray disapproves, but he's told to shut up by the others because he's already as involved as they are. Courtney and Marlo agree to help Sophia, but she can't stay too long because the cleaning crew will arrive soon. Sophia flatlines and her visions show her teenage days. Her mother was always pressuring her to be a good student, causing Sophia to get jealous of her classmate Arena when she was doing better than her at school. She ruined Arena's life by hacking her phone and sending out her private pictures. Sophia's experience is suddenly cut short when the cleaning crew arrives. Jamie pulls the fire alarm to distract the employees while the group escapes in a car, almost getting caught by the security guards. They decide to join a party where they have fun dancing and drinking. Courtney leaves the dance floor when she thinks she sees Tessa in the crowd and follows the girl to the parking lot, where she starts seeing things. The entire place suddenly becomes empty except for her old destroyed car in front of her. When she comes closer to look inside, she finds Tessa's body floating in water. Her hand suddenly comes up and startles Courtney, bringing her back to reality. Upset, she decides to leave the party. Meanwhile, Sophia takes Jamie back to her apartment and they have sex. Her mother can hear them and tries to make them stop, but they don't stop. After Jamie leaves, Sophia finally stands up to her mom and says she's moving out. Marlo and Ray also leave the party together. At Marlo's house, she confesses Cyrus's death was her fault because she made a mistake while choosing his treatment. She also admits being scared because she saw him during her flatlining. Ray tells her she's a good person and that everything's going to be fine. Then he kisses her. Later, Courtney goes to the bridge where she lost her sister and remembers the accident, crying with guilt. Jamie returns to his boathouse and has a vision too. He sees Alicia crying on his bed. Then he hears a baby crying under his furniture. He finds a baby blanket as Alicia approaches him from behind, but she disappears when his phone rings. It's Courtney calling about her visions. Jamie tells her to stay home so he can check on her. Courtney enters her apartment and hears music from the radio. After turning it off, she records a video on her phone, saying sorry and admitting the real reason behind her experiments was to see her sister again, not for science. A light turns on in her room and the radio starts playing again. Courtney finds Tessa writing at a desk, looking scary. The ghost chases Courtney around the apartment and appears outside when Courtney climbs out of the window. When she tries to re-enter the building through a different window, Tessa pushes her over the railing, killing her. Her friends are told the news the next day. Marlo thinks they need to talk about their visions, but Jamie says they must destroy all evidence of their experiments. Jamie says he'll break into Courtney's apartment to get anything that could prove their guilt and tells the others to get rid of their notes. When night falls, Marlo gets a call from Jamie while working at the hospital. He tells her he and Ray found Courtney's computer and notes, but not her phone, which should be in the morgue. Marlo goes to the morgue and quickly finds the phone. She's about to leave when she notices Courtney's name on the body list. After putting the body back, Marlo has a vision. She sees the word murderer and gets a call from Courtney's phone. She picks up and hears a voice calling her name right before the power goes off. Marlo turns on the flashlight on her phone and sees all the doors from the unit are open. Cyrus's body jumps on her before the shock snaps her back into reality. Jamie has issues too. His shower runs out of water and his radio starts playing baby music. Then Alicia appears in front of him. Jamie rushes out of the boat when a hand touches his shoulder. Alicia is waiting for him outside, and when he sees her, he falls into the water. He swims to the dock and screams when a figure stabs his hand. The group watches Courtney's recording. Marlo concludes their sins are coming back to haunt them. Jamie decides everyone should tell the truth, and he starts by talking about Alicia. He slept with her and got her pregnant but was willing to pay for an abortion. When the day came, he couldn't do it, so he drove away and left her. Sophia confesses what she did to Irina in high school, but Marlo doesn't say anything about Cyrus. Later, during a class, Sophia has a vision too. She thinks she's getting mean text messages and sees a video of her having sex with Jamie on the computer. Upset, 
she leaves the room. She enters an elevator that stops at an old classroom where Irina shows up, startling Sophia back into reality. Ray tells Marlo he's discovered she changed Cyrus's autopsy report to make his death look like an accident instead of a mistake. He asks her to tell the Dean the truth. Marlo refuses because it'll destroy her career. Meanwhile, Sophia asks Jamie to go with her to see Irina. She confesses that she sent out her pictures and apologizes. Irina forgives her. Jamie is inspired by this and goes to see Alicia to apologize too. He discovers she's been raising their son alone, so he admits being a coward and wants to help from now on. Later, Marlo has a vision again. She finds herself at the bottom of the pool with Cyrus's body. Another vision begins when she's driving, making her crash. Ray gets a message from Marlo saying she needs to stop all this, so he calls Sophia and Jamie to help find her. They find her flatlining in the hospital's basement. Marlo finds herself in the pool again and stays by Cyrus's side to apologize, but he wakes up and chokes her. Then she appears on a stretcher that Cyrus pushes into an empty room. Marlo is grabbed by the head and put into a tub filled with water to drown. As Ray tells her he needs her to come back to him, Marlo gets out of the water but starts being sucked in by a storm. Suddenly, Courtney appears and tells her she needs to forgive herself, just as Ray finally brings her back to life. Later, Marlo goes to see the Dean to accept responsibility for what she did. The Dean puts her on probation. Afterward, she and Ray throw Courtney's computer into the river so nobody tries the experiment again. The movie ends with the group having a drink at a bar and realizing the pianist is playing the same song Courtney did, so they drink a toast to her. What did you think of this movie? Leave your comments below. If you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.